All right, so in this question, what we're given is a bar, is a, bar, is a composite bar. You know, we have two different materials. One has a modulus elasticity to 200 GPA. One has modulus elasticity to 70 GPA, you know, different areas. But they're constrained between supports A and C. Okay, and what we want to do is we're, we've been given the force P equals 14.22 kilonewtons in this case. Okay, so in, you know, there's a sister video to this um, with a similar question, but in that question, we're given deformation we want to solve for P and this one we're given P and want to solve for well let's say you know the stress in, in the bars AB and BC and also the deformation at joint B so stress we're going to introduce this you know stress equation equals force over area but this question's a little bit different right so what we know about the deformation is we know that the deformation at B right is gonna is basically gonna match in both bars right so if this bar you know gets you know moves one direction this is delta right well what does that mean it means that you know the delta in AB has to equal the delta in BC okay so that's that's a, a very very significant uh, equation because what that means is that well the P of AB times the length of AB you know divided by the a of ab right everything's ab here um, and the much elasticity of ab has to equal the same for you know the bc so pvc lbc you know different numbers but both of these deformations have to be identical for based on compatibility right i mean for this joint b to move it has to move just a certain distance and that has to be the same distance for ab and bc and granted you know what we know is that ab is going to get longer right that'll be in tension and BC will get shorter based on the way the load is applied okay but the the overall you know magnitude or absolute value of that deformation is going to be the same okay so we have an equation here but we have you know two unknowns we have PAB and PBC so what we really need to do is we need to apply you know are some of the forces in the x direction equation to solve this so if we do that what's that gonna look like well let's first draw a free body diagram and with this free body diagram, we know that PAB is in tension, it's pulling away. PBC is in, in compression, it's pushing towards you know, the cut end. And again, what we're gonna just do here is sum the force in the x direction equals zero. So what do we get? We get minus PAB, you know, plus P, minus PBC, and all that equals zero. So I'm just gonna rewrite this as, well, P has to equal PAB plus PBC. Okay, so the two forces here, you know, on either end have to, you know, add up to be this total force P, right? And that total force P is going to cause some delta, you know, some delta here. Okay, so what we don't know is what that, you know, what these two individual forces are, but we know that in order for the system to be compatible, the deformations need to match and the two forces need to add up to P. So the cool thing about this is, this goes back to like, you know, eighth or ninth grade algebra, right? Maybe 10th grade algebra, I don't know, but basically all you're doing is you're solving a system of two linear equations or two, you know, a system of two equations with two unknowns. So here we have two unknowns, PAB, PBC, you know, we have two unknowns here, PAB, PBC. So I'm just gonna use, you know, the substitution method here to, to solve and um, to do that, I'm just gonna move down a little bit to give myself a little bit more room, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to solve everything in terms of PAB. In this case, what we do know is, you know, LAB is the same for both of them. So I'm just going to cancel that out to make my life a little bit easier. If, uh, if the length is different, you'll have to keep that term in. But now I'm going to solve, you know, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to solve for PAB. Okay. So what's that look like? Well, PAB has to equal, you know, I'm going to multiply both sides here by AAB and EAB. Well, this is going to be PBC times, right, what do we have? Well, we have AAB, EAB divided by, you know, what do we have? ABC and EBC. So this is just ends up being a ratio, a ratio of the areas and the modulus of elasticity for both members. Okay, so once we have that, we can take this and plug it in. And what we're gonna get here is we're gonna get P and I'm gonna plug in for P. So we know P is 14.22 kilonewtons. That was given in the problem statement. Okay, and this has to equal PAB, which we know is P BC times this whole big ratio here. So A, A, B, actually, I'm just gonna substitute it in. So we're told that A, B is 625 millimeters squared. 
All right, the modulus elasticity is 200 GPA. And on the bottom one we get, we get ABC and EBC. So we have ABC is uh, 1600 millimeters squared and 70 GPA. So we add that and we also have, can't forget this PVC over here. Okay, so when we do this out, we get well 14.22 kilonewtons has to equal PBC times 1.1607, you know, and it's actually unitless. So if we look at this, the millimeter squared cancel out, the GPAs cancel out, and we get to add that to, you know, PBC. So now I'll go ahead and factor. So 14.22 kilonewtons equals PBC times, you know, uh, 1.11607 plus one. Okay, so that, you know, 2.11607. And when we solve for PVC, we get a value of 6.72 kilonewtons. So that's good, we've got our first value. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just plug in that equation, we get 14.22 kilonewtons has to equal, you know, PAB, uh, plus 6.72 kilonewtons. And when we you know, subtract 6.72 kilonewtons from both sides, you know, what we're gonna get here is we're gonna get PAB has to equal 7.5 kilonewtons. So that's pretty good. We have another answer here that is, you know, we can highlight, but ultimately we didn't solve yet for the stress, right? So the question asked for the stress in these bars, not the forces, right? So we got the forces here, but we, what we need to do back is to go back and take a look at what the stress formula is. So stress equals what? Force over area. So what we need to do is we need to take those forces, divide them by the areas, and let's move down to do that. So when we come and solve for our stress formula, we're gonna look at both bars, right? So the stress in each bar is dependent on the force in that bar and the area in the bar. So for AB, we have the force in AB divided by the area of AB. And when we plug in, we get you know 7.5 kilonewtons, you know, divided by our area of 625 millimeters squared. And I know that one newton per millimeter squared is gonna give me a megapascal. So I'm just gonna, you know, multiply those kilonewtons by one newton per, or a thousand newtons per kilonewton, and get my answer in megapascal. So this ends up being, 12 megapascals. So that's what we get when we do the math out. So that's the stress in this bar, right? We can solve that and that's our first that's our first uh, solution here. And now we wanna look at the stress in BC. And to do that, we do the same thing. You know, the force in BC divided by the area of BC, this has to equal, you know, the 6.72 kilonewtons or just, you know, 6.72 kilonewtons times our thousand uh, newtons per kilonewton right, divided by our area, which is 1600 millimeters squared. So when we do that, we get the math, you know, we do the math out, and we get a 4.2 megapascals. So there's our second solution, you know, and, and you know, the big thing here is the area uh, of BC is so much bigger than the area of AB, you know, that really drives this stress in that, you know, bar BC down. Even though the stress is lower, the deformation is the same, right? So that's that's kind of interesting. You'll notice that the, you know, the modulus elasticity is, is lower in BC as well. The next thing we do is we can come to the deformation here, right? So to solve for deformation, we know that the deformation in either bar is gonna be the same. So we can use either bar, and I'm just gonna, you know, start with AB here, but either one we can use and come up with the right answer. So let's look at PL over AE, and what do we have? Well, for bar AB, P was 7.5 or 7,500 newtons, the length was 1,000 millimeters, and the area we had was 625 millimeters squared, and the modulus of elasticity was 200 GPA, or I like to write it as 200,000 newtons per millimeters squared. So we do that math out, and we get 0 0.06 millimeters. All right, so that's our deformation at joint B. And you know, this, we, we recognize this is the same for AB as it is for BC. So we, if we do BC, right, we, you know, now we solve, or we put in our, our force at BC, which is 6,720 um, 6, newtons, our length 1,000 millimeters, area 1,600 millimeters squared, and our much elasticity 70,000 newton per millimeter squared and we get the same exact answer. So whether it's you know getting longer in AB, right, for the deformation in AB, or if it's getting shorter in the deformation in BC, either way, it's going to be 0 0.06 
millimeters to the right, right? So joint B moves to the right, right? And, and we can box that in because that is the correct answer, or the correct solution here. So that's pretty cool. And, and you know, we can come back up and make sure that we solved this correctly. We can, you know, double check our equations here. Um, but you know, this is this is nice. What we did is we went through and we solved for the stress in the bars, right? And the deformation at joint B using our equations of delta equals PL over AE, you know, our, and our two, our system of two equations, two unknowns. That was really instrumental. And once we had our forces, we could solve for the stress and the deformation. Hey, so I hope that helps. If you have questions, feel free to drop a comment. Otherwise, keep working hard and moving onward and upward.